Today on Jewish Voice, Messianic recording artist and worship leader Paul Wilbert shares his amazing insights on who Jesus really is. You'll also hear a soul-stirring performance that will bring you into the presence of the Lord. All ahead on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, proclaiming Yeshua, Jesus, as Messiah to the world and helping you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. Today's guest is at the forefront of messianic praise and worship. He's reached millions across the globe in the U.S., Latin America, Asia, and Israel. His vision is to change the way the world worships and to help Christians to understand how they can fulfill their mandate to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Please welcome my good friend and one of the finest worship artists in the world, Paul Wilbur. Hey, buddy. I, I, lo I love that slogan, changing the way the world worships. Well, yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, an understanding of worship, first of all, I think is really important. The, the Hebrew word worship is shacha. It's the one that's used most often. It means to bow down. It means to prostrate yourself. It means to put your, even your, not only your spirit and your soul, but your actual physical body in a place of submission. I see worship as really contained in the statement of Yeshua when he said, if there's any other way to win salvation, I'm, I'm editing in, in the garden. He said, if there's any other way, Father, for this thing to be accomplished, then let it be done. But not my will, your will be done. That right there to me is a definition of worship in spirit and in truth. We see nice. Abraham on, on the mountain, the same mountain 1,500 years before Yeshua. And Abraham's got the knife raised. His son is bound and he's on the altar. And the voice comes from heaven. Do no harm to the boy because now I know, God speaking, now I know that you truly, and most Bibles say fear, but it's the word worship in the Hebrew. Now I know that you truly worship. They were obeying. The word says to obey is better than sacrifice. So this music I'm praying will provoke people to want to obey. Great, Back to me great. is the essence. It's a total worship. surrender. Now, we, we also use the word messianic. For the, the few that don't know you, you are a Jewish believer in Jesus. Your dad was Jewish. Your mom, a Baptist. Yeah. A Baptist and a Jew. And out of that, you were called to your people. Yeah. One new man. One new man. <laughs> a Baptist Indeed. and a Jew. Now, also, you wanted to be an opera singer mm -hmm. and ended up writing music for the Lord. And you were sharing with me that you just couldn't help writing Jewish music. It wasn't planned. It just came out of your heart. And you realized that's my call. Talk about that. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, you are what you are. Uh, you know, we talk about Jews and Christians and, and wannabes and this and that. But Judaism is a system of faith that you can choose. But being a Jew you, is bloodline. You either are or you are not. And not better or less, just that's the way God has made the world, Jews and non-Jews. And it's his design. So, um, but this, this whole expression, what is messianic? What is messianic? It is, it's a, it's a it's the soul of a, of a Jew crying out to the God of Israel. I, I really believe, Jonathan, as Jews, that this is our purpose in a nutshell, to know the God of Israel and to make him known. First, to know him as individuals and then to make him known to the world. That is our call. That's why I, I love what you do. Uh, I've been with you on, on a bunch of these different uh, Jewish voice uh, outreaches around the world. And, and I have festivals. Th those festivals are life changing. You know, and on each of the programs, you invite people to be a part. I, I couldn't recommend those any more highly. That when people come, their lives are changed. It's almost like going to Israel for the first time. When we become a part of those festivals with you, I've learned so much. And I've used those same principles to reach out in Zambia, where the, where the vice president of the nation 
came to know the Lord. We feed 28,000 Zambian Beautiful. children twice a day, still from that in 06. I learned an awful lot about traveling with you. I'm so glad that we've had that opportunity. The amazing thing is that Jewish people are open to the gospel today. Amazing. And the church has a role to play in that. Just We have just a couple minutes. Talk about that. Well, Provoking them to jealousy. Yeah, and, and how do you do that? I was provoked to jealousy. I, I told you on one of the earlier shows, uh, a, a pretty shiksa, uh, a nice non-Jewish girl asked me to go to... Beautiful blonde. A, a beautiful blonde. She still is, by the way. Whose name I can't remember. No, it wasn't Luann. <laughs> it was not my wife who invited me. Whoa. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Mm -hmm. Actually, after I got saved, I introduced that, that young lady who asked me to go to church. I introduced her to a guy at church who she eventually married. So, uh, sowing and reaping. You know, well, you got to look her, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Well, my, my wife is gorgeous. She just turned 60, and she looks 28. What am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, this, this, whole, this whole journey, you know, is such, a, is such a delight. God is so good. But what does it mean to provoke a Jew? I get provoked by the manifest presence of God in a service. A guy got up and sang with his guitar and God inhabited his praise and the atmosphere changed. That provoked me. That's what I'm hoping that these discs that we make gets into the hands of Jewish people um, and it, it changes the atmosphere in they, their car they will. in their home. And, and we got to take a break, but you've also written a book. People don't know that Paul's not only a worship leader, he's a teacher as well, and he's written a really, really important book. So don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about that, and then Paul will take the stage right after this. Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming Messiah to the world, to the Jew first, and also to the nations. One key way we do this is by providing humanitarian aid to some of the poorest people in the world. In helping them, we share God's love and the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote Lost Tribes community in Barangwa, Zimbabwe, the Lemba. This faithful yet forgotten people have ties to the ancient people of Israel, the priestly tribe of Aaron, and have been practicing ancient Jewish customs for hundreds of years. We need your help to make this vital life-saving outreach possible. Will you be a blessing to these wonderful people and the thousands of others in desperate need? The elderly, children, infants, and toddlers could die for lack of basic medical care. You can help save lives, but we must act now. Call or click right now to help us save lives. And with your gift of any amount, we'll say thank you by sending you a new CD by internationally known singer and songwriter Paul Wilbur called Revive. This awe-inspiring album features some of Paul's most popular praise and worship songs, but with new takes on his classic hits. The songs highlight the coming of the Lord and what God has in store for you. Along with this incredible CD, we also want you to have this beautiful Aaron's Blessing keychain. It's a replica of the oldest known copy of biblical text, the Aaronic Blessing. It's perfect for carrying your house or car keys. And the words of the Aaronic Blessing, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, will be a constant reminder of God's love for you. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $120 or more today, to help bless some of the neediest people on earth, we'll send you all of the gifts just mentioned and Paul Wilbur's latest book, Touching the Heart of God, Embracing the Calendar of the Kingdom. In this dynamic resource, which highlights the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, Paul explains the many treasures of God's kingdom and how you, a citizen of his kingdom, can better understand his plans, his purposes, and the inheritance that he has for you. And we'll also send you a lovely sterling necklace with a star of David and the name of Yeshua written in Hebrew letters. It comes with a 20-inch chain and will be sure to inspire wonderful conversations about the Messiah. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this humanitarian aid and to help countless others around the globe, please call or click now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the neediest people on earth. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call or click 
right now. Today on Jewish Voice, Messianic recording artist and worship leader Paul Wilbert shares his amazing insights on who Jesus really is. You'll also hear a soul-stirring performance that will bring you into the presence of the Lord. All ahead on Jewish Voice. We're back with Paul Wilbert, who has a brand new CD that he's just released, which we're making available called Revive. Uh, but you also have a new book out, mm -hmm. Touching the Heart of God. I love the title, Embracing the Calendar of the Kingdom. What is the calendar of the kingdom? The calendar of the kingdom is a series of celebrations that God has clearly laid out in the scriptures, beginning with the first month, which of course is not January, but it's Passover, the very, Nisan, the very first month. And it is a system for God's people for rest. The day starts with rest and there was evening and there was morning the first day. So the God's calendar starts with rest and then worship and then there's work and then there's play. And he's laid out through the scriptures a system for his people to be healthy and to be rested and to be strong and to honor him and to show forth. We were meant to be a reflection of who he is. And so his calendar is laid out for us. And when we disregard it, we become workaholics. We forget about Sabbath, whether we recognize that as the seventh day or the first day. And by the time we continue to just readjust the calendar, the godly calendar that he's set up, these days, by the way, are on, he keeps a day timer. Remember that back in the, what was it, the sure. 80s, and everybody carried a, a day time and around? people that still use them, by the way. There are those who still do that. Now they have it on their phone or their, yeah. their pads or whatever. But God has this system, and they were set up to be a system for us of worship and rest and health and strength. And when we disregard it, we become sick and depressed and detached from who he is. Let me read an excerpt. I want you to talk about it. I love this. No humility. No presence, no presence, no glory, no glory, no unity, nor blessing, no blessing, no one new man. Where there is no one new man, there is no testimony of Jesus the Messiah. Mm. What does that mean? Wow. I wish we had in 10 one, more in shows. In one minute. In one minute <laughs> or less. It, it all begins, uh, this walk with God all begins with humility on our part that we need to recognize, I need God. I need a Messiah. I need a Savior, however you want to express that. When we start in that place of humility, now we can understand who he is and what he has created us for. The one new man, the kingdom, Jonathan, as I see it, there's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness that we were all born into because of the fallenness of man. And that kingdom has a king. Well, actually, he's a prince. His name I don't even want to mention, but we all know who it is. And then there's another kingdom, the kingdom of God, that he offers to every man by faith. And, and so they're in conflict. And they are in constant conflict. It's what we're seeing in Israel today. The kingdoms are in conflict. It's not about Palestinian, about Jew. There are two kingdoms that are in direct conflict today. Exactly. And if those parties started in a place of humility, then there would be the outcome of the kingdom, which has always been, always been Jew and Gentile. One new man has always been God's design. Abraham was not a Jew. Abraham was from the Ur of the Chaldees. He was, uh, Hebrew means one who crossed over. He crossed over, and because he became a friend of God, he believed God, God started his kingdom there, and it's always been open to Jew and Gentile. We've got to get the Jews back, though, don't we? We have got to get the Jews back. And We're you talk it. about that in your book, a beautiful picture of <laughs> Joseph not being recognized by his brothers because he was dressed like an Egyptian, smelled like an Egyptian, had Jew, uh, Egyptian makeup. But when he left, I believe he took off those garments and put that He put robe all back the others on. outside. He stripped off all of that stuff 
and said, Behold, I am your brother. They fell on his neck. And, and Zechariah 14 says, One day Israel will fall on the neck of Yeshua and say, Where did you get these wounds? He'll say, In the house of, of my friends. It is just powerful. Well, if you want to, if you want to know more, you've got to get the book. It's terrific. Well, touching the heart of God, embracing the calendar of the kingdom, and then you have a new a new CD out. We're going to hear a song from it. Revive. You're going to do what song are you going to do off this today? Uh, it's called "Blessed Is the Man." It's lifted right out of Psalm love 84. It. I love it. Sir, the, the very last line. The sir, very last. I love line. that song, sir. The stage is yours. Do I have to go now? <laughs> <laughs>
Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming Messiah to the world, to the Jew first, and also to the nations. One key way we do this is by providing humanitarian aid to some of the poorest people in the world. In helping them, we share God's love and the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote lost tribes community in Barangwa, Zimbabwe, the Lemba, this faithful yet forgotten people have ties to the ancient people of Israel, the priestly tribe of Aaron, and have been practicing ancient Jewish customs for hundreds of years. We need your help to make this vital life-saving outreach possible. Will you be a blessing to these wonderful people and the thousands of others in desperate need? The elderly, children, infants, and toddlers could die for lack of basic medical care. You can help save lives, but we must act now. Call or click right now to help us save lives. And with your gift of any amount, we'll say thank you by sending you a new CD by internationally known singer and songwriter Paul Wilbur called Revive. This awe-inspiring album features some of Paul's most popular praise and worship songs, but with new takes on his classic hits. The songs highlight the coming of the Lord and what God has in store for you. Along with this incredible CD, we also want you to have this beautiful Aaron's Blessing keychain. It's a replica of the oldest known copy of biblical text, the Aaronic Blessing. It's perfect for carrying your house or car keys. And the words of the Aaronic Blessing, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, will be a constant reminder of God's love for you. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $120 or more today, to help bless some of the neediest people on earth, we'll send you all of the gifts just mentioned and Paul Wilbur's latest book, Touching the Heart of God, Embracing the Calendar of the Kingdom. In this dynamic resource, which highlights the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, Paul explains the many treasures of God's kingdom and how you, a citizen of his kingdom, can better understand his plans, his purposes, and the inheritance that he has for you. And we'll also send you a lovely sterling necklace with a star of David and the name of Yeshua written in Hebrew letters. It comes with a 20 inch chain and will be sure to inspire wonderful conversations about the Messiah. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this humanitarian aid and to help countless others around the globe, please call or click now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the neediest people on earth. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call or click right now. A major part of what we do here at Jewish Voice is to reach out to help Jewish communities in need around the world. Surprisingly, one such group are Holocaust survivors living in Israel. Many live well below the poverty line, are alone and suffering. Recently, I traveled to Israel to meet some of them to better understand their situation. I have to tell you, I fell in love with these people. They've suffered so much, yet they're loving, so friendly and appreciative, and they have some amazing stories of survival to share. Take a look. Can you talk specifically about the people that need our help? Maria, she's from Ashdod. What was the most significant I found out is a endless loneliness. Ta w szkole było, da? Da. A tu każe, ja języka nie znam, nic o nie mają. Nie nauczyła się, była by nauczyła się mój pani, ja chorosz pani jak mała. Gdzie wy? Wy wy zjeść? Nie było wojsku, nie. Nas było trzy sestry. I mama nas wygnali z domu, czym było. Nic 
ничего не взяли. Загнали нас в Днестр, так вода мама нас так тримает до горы. Одна умерла, у нас 39-го року, середуча. Нас две осталось. Мама нас тримает до горы, они стреляют по голову, мы кричим, плачем, пищим, мама. А когда уже они переходили, Це його воля, не наша. Я тепер дуже власлаба в п'ятницю. Кажу, Боже, я тобі дякую, що ти мене навідуєш. Не буде я слаба, ти мене випробовуєш. Чи я буду нарікати на тебе, чи я буду казати зле на тебе, чи я буду тебе просити. Я тобі дякую, що ти мене навідуєш. We're committed to helping these Holocaust survivors in the final years of their lives. We only have about a decade left, and then they'll all be gone. You can help us make an impact on their lives and share God's love with these people that have suffered so much and live to tell about it. For more information on what you can do to help, contact us at 800-299-9374 or you can go to jewishvoice.com. TV. The Lemba, a lost tribe of Israel discovered in the remote regions of Zimbabwe. DNA proves that they are descendants of the priestly tribe of Aaron, practicing their Jewish faith for thousands of years, not knowing their long-awaited Messiah has come and will come again. And the Jewish Voice Outreach Team has the privilege of sharing this amazing good news with them through our outreaches in Zimbabwe. It's amazing. Come witness this miracle. Be an important part of God at work in these last days, gathering His people back to Himself. We need volunteers urgently for this outreach, medical professionals, prayer partners, and practical service volunteers as we minister to thousands of very needy and spiritually hungry people in just one short week. Come with us and help these desperate Jewish people. Say yes to being God's hands and feet. Please answer the call. Thank you so much for watching today, and thank you to Paul Wilbur for joining us this week. As I close out the show today, I want to remind you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, 6 says, may those who love you prosper. So if you want to prosper, pray for Israel. They really need our prayers now. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you.